Hello everyone. I'd like to thank you for joining us today for today's sermon from Praise Assembly of God here at 89 Congress Street. Hope you enjoy this message, and if you have any feedback you'd like to offer, feel free to give me a call at 207-364-3856 or my cell phone, 207-357-4748. Again, enjoy today's message. Thanks. People have come for God's Word today. Five of you. Wow. Well, let me ask you, how many have come for God's Word today? Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope that you have. You know, because God is doing some great things and God's Word is just ministering to people. And uh, it's wonderful to see a group of believers hungry for more of God's Word. A group of believers that want to dig deeper in the Word of God. That want to learn more about God. That want to uh, shine for God and want to live for the Lord. I, uh, I'm so excited, guys. I can't stress enough as we wind down 2014 of what God is going to do, you know, in 2015 should He tarry. I believe fully, church, that, that God is, has a desire to save every soul in this river valley, and I have a desire to share the gospel with as many people as I can, the good news of Jesus Christ, to be able to share the gospel, uh, not just in events like yesterday, but wherever we go to share the good news of our Lord and Savior. And uh, I know God's going to do some wonderful, wonderful things, even greater things than He's already done, praise be to God. The the title of this morning's message is Showers of Blessings. Showers of Blessing. And tonight, you, if you're reading your bulletin, you say, Pastor, uh, that's not what the bulletin said. Well, God laid on my heart later in the week after the bulletin was done to preach this. And so tonight's going to be Psalm 95 and Psalm 100 uh, together because they go together as Thanksgiving Psalms. So we'd love to have you come back out with a little piece from James chapter 1 with all good things come from God. So, the, so it's going to be a great time tonight, so I encourage you to come back out. But church, this message is unlike any Thanksgiving message that you probably heard. This is not a traditional passage of Scripture. This is for Thanksgiving. This is not a, a passage of Scripture that you hear every Thanksgiving Sunday. When God began to lay on my heart uh, this message, I began to say, Lord, why are we going here? Well, church, as God began to speak to me, and once again last night at prayer meeting, is the fact that uh, God desperately wants to bring showers of blessing to the river valley. You can draw so many parallels to a broken Israel during the Babylonian captivity of Ezekiel and Daniel's day, especially Daniel's day, but what was forthcoming because of Israel's idolatry. You can see the brokenness and the pain. And as we look at these verses from a wonderful piece of scripture, you're going to see, wow, a lot of that is going on in the River Valley today. But today, I want to bring hope. Today, I want to bring encouragement that God wants to shower us with his blessing. God wants to pour out blessing upon us, even though the economy's hurting, doom and gloom, sadness yesterday. You know, we brought the hope, the hopeful message of the gospel. Yesterday, I talked with five or six people afterwards in the brokenness and the pain, and I encouraged them to come today saying, hey, God wants to shower this place with his blessing. Church, think about it. Think about what God can do, and, and because government's trying all they can try. We've had different uh, leaders different political party, everything just seems to either be getting worse or staying the same. But church, if we begin to try Jesus Christ in this community, we can see God begin to shower this place with blessing and where we can be proud once again to call Rumford and the River Valley home. Why not? Why not believe that? Why not believe that? Every time there's discussion about the mill, people either get optimistic or pessimistic. Every time reports come out, every time Augusta brings forth the budget for each municipality, that, you know, there's either doom or gloom and all this kind of stuff. But I believe fully, if I believe fully that if we fix what's going on in the secret place of one's heart and let God begin to penetrate one's soul. You know, it's going to affect, it's going to go from our home right into this community and shine for Jesus Christ. And I believe God wants to shower us with blessing. Do you know in Scripture, before God brings anything to deal with judgment, He always brings a warning. But He always brings the blessing that if a person was to listen to God or God's servant, the blessing that would come. 
Today we're going to look at the blessing that was that was to, that God wanted to bring to the people of Israel during a difficult time of captivity and a, and a time leading into the captivity of, of Israel's foe. But church, God brought, God wanted to bring hope and encouraging folks. Hey, that if you obey, if you turn from your your sin, if you I will bless. And today we're going to look at specifically what those blessings are. And you know that there's an old hymn of the church. We sing it at the nursing home sometimes, showers of blessing. Church, you know what I want to hear us doing more of is testifying of the blessings of God. To, rather than say, Pastor, I need this or I need that or I need God to do this or God to do that. Wouldn't that be great if we began to have testimonial services that took two to three hours where people were saying what God had did. Amen. Praise be to God. Rather than God, this is what I need. God, this is what you've done. Praise the Lord. And I mean, church, I believe fully God wants to shower blessings all across this room. Amen. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it. I believe it's our only hope, to be honest with you. I believe it's our only hope is the good news of Jesus Christ. And so if you guys would be so kind as to stand with me for the reading of God's word. Ezekiel chapter 34. And we're going to be looking at verses 26 to 31 here this morning. If you cannot find the book of Ezekiel, it's, uh, it's in the, the two-thirds part of the Old Testament. It's one of the major prophets. But if you cannot find it or do not have a Bible, it's on the screen for you. Uh, here, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Ezekiel 34, beginning with verse 26. I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing, and I will cause showers to come down into their season. There shall be showers of blessing. Then the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase. They shall be safe in their land, and they shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them from the hand of those who enslaved them. And they shall no longer be a prey for the nations, nor shall beasts of the land devour them. But they shall dwell safely, and no one shall make them afraid. I will raise up for them a garden of renown, and they shall no longer be consumed with hunger in the land, nor bear the shame of the Gentiles anymore. Thus they shall know that I, the Lord, am the Lord their God, and with them. And they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. For, I'm sorry, you are my flock and the flock of my pasture. You are men, and I am your God, says the Lord God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Church, last week we looked at John. And we looked where Jesus is the good shepherd. And he is the doorway to heaven. Matter of fact, he is the door himself. And that no one gets into heaven without Jesus Christ letting them through. And church, if you, if you pick up the full context of Ezekiel 34, you will find the prophet Ezekiel was declaring, beginning in verse 11, that God is the good shepherd. And that God is going to meet the needs of his people. And that God is going to seek out the sheep that are lost. And that God, even though they may be scattered, God is going to bring them back together again, which is exactly what happened in the history of Israel in 1948 when the sheep were all scattered around the world. World War II was over. Hitler was gone. Israel was reborn as a nation. And God began to repopulate the holy city. And Israel today is, is being populated more and more every year. It's estimated by the year 2020, they will have over 12 million people. And just after World War II, the nation of Israel barely had 300,000 Jews living there. God is going to do something wonderful and great. And God is the good shepherd. Today, church, I believe fully that God is drawing in sheep that have, have become scattered. He's ready to bless He's ready to pour out His Spirit upon a child, upon a family. He's ready to do great and wonderful things this Thanksgiving season. Church, I believe fully too that God is saying, hey, will you try me? You know what? Ezekiel's audience didn't listen to him. Daniel's audience didn't listen to him. And right on through, Isaiah's audience didn't listen to him, any of the prophets. None of them turned from their sin, turned from their idolatry. And therefore, they were held in bondage for 2,800 years. 
I don't know about you, but Rumford struggled from what, from what I've read. The last 35 years, we've gone nothing but downhill every year. Talking to people. Some of you have been here. You know what I'm talking about. It's not the same town it was when you grew up here. The value system has completely changed. Hard work, integrity is, 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 is as rare as a $2 bill. The folks don't stay. They come and go. It's a high turnover ratio. It's, it's, it's all different. There's, there's despair. There's brokenness. There's, there's spiritual sin. A lot of our churches, even within the Catholic Church, they used to have three up here in the River Valley. They're down to one. And uh, merging places, a lot of the uh, Protestant churches, nothing much is happening. Matter of fact, you know, uh, some are, are, are meeting in homes uh, this winter because it's going to cost too much to put oil in the tank. In church, there's so much, uh, there's so much uh, brokenness and pain. And there's a lot of similarities to that of Israel, especially during the captivity time when they were even moved from their land and taken into Babylon and uh, for, for all those years with the Babylonian captivity. But church, people ask me all the time, where is our hope? And church, you know, it starts with us. It starts with us right here. We if sitting around complaining about what the town is doing and what Augusta is doing. That's not going to get us anywhere but make us red in the face. We, we are in the front lines, and it begins with us, I believe, with all my heart. And God, we are seeing evidence. God is showering us with his favor, showering us with his blessing upon us. We have the answer, just like Ezekiel had the answer. Now, we can't worry about whether or not folks are going to listen to us or not. God's going to take care of that, and they have the free will. But we have to take the answer and the hope of Jesus Christ to this river valley. And I believe God's going to shower us with the same blessing that we just stood and heard as we read uh, and, and followed after Ezekiel 34, verses 26 to 31. That God wanted, wants to bless His people. And we are God's people today. We are His children. Those that believe in Christ Jesus, John declares in John 1, you know that we are the children of God. Praise be to God. Every person's created in the image of God, but not everybody's a child of God. Do you know that? To be a child of God, you have to call on the name of Jesus Christ. You just can't live however you want to live and expect, well, I'm an heir of Jesus. Oh, no, it don't fly like that. To be, you have to put your faith in Christ. Your body as a temple of the Holy Spirit enables you to become a child of God. And here, church, as we look at these six verses, seven verses, I believe as we compare it as uh, Israel during the, the 6th century B.C. and as we compare it to the river valley of what we're seeing here today, I pray that God will speak to your heart and say, you know what, God wants to bless us. God wants to bring our population up. God wants to bless our economy. God wants to bless our school system. God wants to bless and do great and wonderful things. He wants to change our reputation. Do you know, church, that God wants to change the reputation of Rumford? Does it bother you when somebody makes fun of our town? It bothers me, and I'm not even from Maine. I'm a proud Maryland boy, you know. But it bothers me because this is where I call home for 11 years. And, and does it bother you when you see a Facebook post and someone ha defines us as Scumford Rumford? Or that someone that brings down and you say, say hey, not everybody in Rumford's like that. Not every, it's, not, it's, not, it's not this or that, this or that, you know. And I believe as the church rises up and God begins to shower us with his blessing, which is going to start with the heart, soul, and mind of the individual. That we're going to see blessing begin to come. People are going to be motivated not to live like the devil, but to go out and live like Jesus. That'll turn any town around. Any town will turn. That'll turn any town around. That'll turn any town around. You know, church, my grandfather was a tobacco farmer, and they had a lot of chickens. But he used to say to me very, very faintly, because I really didn't know him, because he was a very old and feeble man. And even as a child, I really didn't know either one of my grandfathers. But, I, but I'll, never, I'll never forget... Uh, I'll never forget where he used to talk about and his very deep voice would say, just, you know, he'd say, um, be sure you lock up the door to the hen house because if you don't, the fox is going to come in and kill every one of your hens. As a boy, I didn't understand what that meant, but I understand what it means now. That if we think that we can play with the fox or we can play with the devil and not get burned, we got a problem 
we got a serious problem. And so as the heart and the attitude begins to change, we're going to take that out to this community with our work ethic, with our integrity at home, with the secret place, which we sang about during worship. You know, we, we, are, going to, we are going to see God. And that's, that's God's blessing. God works best through his people. Now, you've got to believe that. You say, well, Pastor, God doesn't need me. Yes, he doesn't need you. Yes, he does. God works best through his people. He always has. He, uh, up until the tribulation, God has always raised up Moses or an Abraham. He raised up Daniel. He raised up, you know, all the, all the great servants of God. He would always raise up one to lead and to shine, you know, and, and for the people, you know, to shine for the Lord and to be salt and light of the world. You know, God raises up and calls his people to represent him. And as God begins to shower us with blessing after blessing, I believe we're going to see our economy change. You know what? I believe God's blessed the River Valley with amazing beauty. Amazing beauty. I believe that this economy could thrive just on the land that we have. I was talking to some farmers, and they said of all of their, a lot of their land is growing up. They come to me and say, this used to all be potato fields. But all I have now is this little patch over here. Because I can't find enough people to work. That, those fields over there used to be all hay fields. But I can't find enough people. Church, the mill's the mill's the mill. We're a mill town. But God's blessed us with land and beauty. And I believe our economy can turn around by the land, as we're going to read here in just a second. God, but, but to be able to be, be able to be blessed by the land, you've got to have workers that'll till, that'll collect. That'll be out there and say, you know, I can, I can, I can do these things. I can, I can be motivated. I can have a, a humble heart. Church verse 26, I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. You know what, church? You say, where is God's hill? Well, in this text, it's talking about the Holy Land, of course. But today, church, I believe we're standing on holy ground today. I pray that when people walk by, they'll feel the presence of God. I want to come in here. I believe that. I pray that when they see the lights, well, what's, what is going on tonight? And want to come in here and find out what's taking place. I believe, church, that God wants to bless all around us. Why? Because this is God's house. This is where his people serve and worship him and represent him. Just as the holy city of Jerusalem was God's hill, and he wanted to bless all our... He didn't want the Babylonians running the show. He didn't want the Persians and the Greeks and the Romans during Jesus' day. He wanted his people. Just like today, he wants the, the, the Jewish people, the Israelis, you know, to, to, to be blessed there. He doesn't want to share that with anybody. That's God's city. That's his hill. But as far as the place of, the place of God, this, his hill here is 89 Congress Street. We're shining for him. May we be a city on a hill. May we, be, may we be a spot that reflects Jesus Christ. And I believe we are. Yesterday was evident of that. To God be the glory. It wasn't one thing we did. It was not the thing the church did. We were serving Jesus. We were representing him in all that we did. But he says here, I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. Do you know all around this place there are thousands of people that live? People that live in Hotel Harris, live in the Muskie. People that live right around the corner on Route 2 or or on Waldo or Cumberland, right or in a small area. Some of us live a half hour away like myself. But God wants to bless all around us. And he wants to be a complete circle, including where you lay your head. God wants to bless your house. Joshua declares, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God wants to bless. He's looking to bless your house. Do you know God is so precise, though? That he could bring showers of blessing to 202 Waldo and bring, and bring judgment to 203 Waldo because God is God. He's so precise he could even come into your bedroom and bless one, one bedroom and not the other. Because God knows where you're at. Showers of blessing. God wants to bless this whole community based on what we do. Do you know, just really quickly, the history of Israel was, was great. This is what God would do first. God would look to, you know, he would look to the governors and the leaders uh, of, the, of the, the kings, the emperors. Uh, he would look to, you know, uh, all the leaders first. And if the leaders, you know, that was politically speaking, did not respond to God's warning, then, he would, then God would certainly, most importantly, look to his the religious leaders, the priests and the scribes, you know, and if they didn't respond, God would leave ultimately with the people. 
What did his people do? Did they just sit back and go along with the crowd? Or did the people rise up and speak for God? Well, church, we need to pray for 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue because what's coming out of there is not very hopeful. Spiritually speaking, on behalf of Jesus Christ, we certainly need to pray for Augusta, our state capital. But you know what? Quite honestly, we can't do much about other than pray and send a letter to the president or our senator. We can do something here locally, a grassroots effort where God begins to, you know what, God's going to bless us by how, how we live, how we conduct ourselves, how we shine for the Lord. God's going to do that. God wants to be a blessing. That's what he wanted with the Israelites of Ezekiel's day, but they didn't heed Ezekiel's warning. The people of, in Ezekiel's day didn't listen to Ezekiel. They did not listen. Uh, the kings were wicked. The, the religious leaders were wicked. The people didn't respond. Therefore, they suffered for 2,800 years. But church, they saw the light in 1948. What are we going to do? Are we going to say, Lord, you're, you mean to tell me that you, you want all around this place to be blessed? And you better believe he does. This place, God wants to bless the River Valley. God wants to bring great uh, healing to this area. He wants to change our whole reputation. But he's looking for his people. We're the last option, in my opinion. We're the last option. And he says here, and I will call showers to come down in their season. Guess what our season is now? I believe it. Our season is now. Don't sit back and say, well, I'll wait until January. Our season is now. Our season, say, Lord, begin to bless. What can I do to ensure that blessing is going to come to my home and to, the, to my part of the circle around your hill? I want, and our season is now. Now, Israel's season would be 1948. To wake up Israel, God would have to allow a leader by the name of Adolf Hitler to come to power with a, with a decree to wipe out every Jew. And I tell you, he was pretty successful in killing many of them. But church, here is, the, here is the thing. Our season is now. Our season is today. There shall be showers of blessing. You know, some people say, Pastor, do you really believe that? Yes, I do. If I didn't believe our season was now, I wouldn't be here. Church, God, is, as has already been prophesied by missionary Chris Trueworthy of Mexico, that God was going to use us as a trendsetter. That was evident when Rite Aid was up in this place Friday morning. That is evident by the newspaper looking uh, to do stories to bring hope to people. That is evident by the selectmen asking, hey, can you do a desperation form because we're losing people and we don't know what to do. You know, it is evident that our season is now. Will we continue to shine for Jesus? You say, Pastor, we just had a great event yesterday. You know what? That's great. But that was yesterday and there's still souls that need Jesus. Our season is now. Showers of blessing. Church, tonight we're going to have a time of testimony, and many of you are going to testify of the blessings of God. Many of you will testify what God is doing. Praise be to God. I tell you what, the membership class, every one of them is a testimony of God. Right, wives? I tell you what, a blessing of God. God is on the throne. He is, he is, he is doing great things. Our season is now. You say, Pastor, uh, you know, how long will the season be? We don't need to know that. I pray it's going to be right on through until Jesus comes. That's how I live. As if our season is now until Jesus Christ returns. But you know what, church? We leave that in the hands of God. And we leave that into the hands of those that are going to come after us. All we can do is control what we do here now for such a time as this. But God said there shall be showers of blessing. Notice showers is plural, not just one. God wanted the blessing to be continual. That's why we can't just be satisfied with yesterday and say, okay, this is great, wonderful. Why do we need to? We're not satisfied until every soul has heard the gospel and come to Christ. I just believe that. That's what I believe. We have 10,000 people that live in the River Valley. Until every soul comes to know Christ and has heard the gospel, then you can say, let's take a break. Now, that doesn't mean that, that you're going to be able to participate in everything. Of course not. But church, the, the, the church is not one individual. The church is the body. And we are marching forward. And our goal is to be just like that of the Father, that none should perish, but all come to everlasting life. But he says there at the end of verse 26, there shall be showers of blessing. 
Verse 27, then the trees of the field shall yield their fruits. Church, we can begin to pray. Do you know that there are many properties, my wife and I looked at many of them, that used to be apple orchard businesses, that used to produce fruits, but they're all, they're all dried up trees that need to be cut down and pruned because the, the time has, the, the season has moved on. Church, I believe that God wants to yield the fruits, our potato crop. God wants to yield the fruit of our corn crop. God wants to bless the fruit of our life. And then, then he goes on to say, and the earth shall yield her increase. Well, church, when you think about it, God is ready to yield an increase to our ground. God is ready to do some great and wonderful things. And you know what? This is a great time. You can sit back and say, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm going to, if you're looking for something to do, I would encourage you to get an education. You can buy land real cheap in Rumford. Houses are really cheap. Matter of fact, we got the cheapest market almost in the entire state of Maine. You say, you know what? That land out there, that five acres, that six acres, I, I can, God can bless your land. And God can begin, you can put a few cows on it. You can put uh, corn in it, potatoes. <laughs> potatoes grow anywhere. You know, and so, you know, I'm going to invest in that. And I'm, you know what? More and more people that say they're going to do that, this is a great time to purchase land. God can begin to bless you with a great harvest and the fruit of the land, and the earth will begin to feed this river valley. Wow. Do you know that many believe that within 10 to 15 years, I was talking to one farmer in the fall, that our farming industry and agriculture may be completely dead. Wow. It's like many churches. If all you have is 70-year-olds... As Benjamin Franklin said, death and taxes are assured, barring the rapture. How's the church going to survive? Eventually, 70 and 80 and 90 year olds pass away. Most of our farmers, do you notice how old they are? We work with them. Some of them are into their 90s. My hay farmer, Mr. Bailey, before he passed away, that brother was pushing near 100 years old. Two years ago, he said to me, he said, Justin, I... Uh, I used to have all these all these fields were hay fields, and I was willing to pay some folks fifteen dollars an hour, but I couldn't find committed workers to go out and hay. Fifteen dollars an hour, he said. I used to do it for a quarter a day. Fifteen dollars an hour. My word. Can't find the people, therefore I can only get one cut in. What does that mean? That means well, one cut. That means that he lost a whole second crop of hay simply because he didn't have laborers to go out and work the fields. But church, think about that. We might not have no agriculture. You know, America used to be 97% agrarian. Today it's 3%. I believe, though, we can look right here in our own land and, and say, you know what? This is what we're going to do. And this is a great time to be motivated and to set goals. Our government helps people with even buying land and first-time home buyers. If you have bad credit, there, uh, there's, there's all ways that you can buy and begin up and work the fields, and it can start with what built America, the grassroots of farming. God says here, I want to pour out blessing, the fruit, the earth. They shall be safe in their land, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Do you know how many people don't live in, that do not feel safe in the river valley? It breaks my heart. People don't feel safe. We have to have someone standing at the door. We have a security team even in church. And in the month of September, we did a public safety forum for the food pantry where people have been robbed and hurt. And, 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 and the police, uh, Mexico and Rumford, they don't know uh, what to do because they only have a certain budget and, they, and people don't feel safe. Well, here God says, what a great blessing that would be to begin to feel safe again in the River Valley. Wow. Safe. Here God, God knew and He understood what was taking place. That you can feel safe and that you can know that I am the Lord. That the, uh, when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them from the hand of those who enslaved them. Church, do you know that people come, people come from Boston, people come from Lewiston with one purpose, to sell drugs to our young people. That's how they're making money. People say, Pastor, where are all these nice cars coming from? They're selling drugs. They're selling pills. They're looking at us as an easy target because we have a desperate population and we have a place that is, that is hurting. We have a low police force. We have a low budget. And we have young people that will buy. And they're coming here. 
and people that do not feel safe. Well, church, here it is so, it's so important. Please stay focused, church, because this is so, so important to me. Because God is ready to deliver us from those who have enslaved us the last 30 years, particularly the last 10 years. Sin and wickedness. You know, that people looking, looking to sell. People say, well, just looking for a way out. There's a way out, all right. His name is Jesus. Will we do our part and share that with the world? Or are we going to participate with this enslavement? Are we going to participate and associate with people who we know are wheeling and kneeling? Yeah, we're to share the gospel with them. We're to bring hope to them. But we certainly don't need to sit there and watch the Super Bowl and get high with them. Which is what goes on in many instances. Deal with it all the time. God is saying, I want to bless you. I want, I want God to, to pour out those blessings upon us in this area. You say, Pastor, is this necessary? Yes. If we want to see the dark spiritual cloud of desperation move across the river valley and get out of here for good, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Stuff enslaves us. Yeah. Time and time and time again. But what's the answer? Jesus Christ. Amen. What's the answer? We stop participating in it. You say, Pastor, uh, I just wanna, I just wanna witness to them. Church, you can't witness to somebody if you're joining them. I would encourage anybody to stop next door at the River Valley Healthy Community the Coalition. There, they do an awesome job with statistics about the, of the amount of adults that buy alcohol for minors. They do amazing statistics and results about about and surveys by how many parents do drugs with their children. Where is this coming from? Well, mom's new boyfriend's up from Massachusetts and they're wheeling and kneeling. This is all around us and it's enslaving us. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm tired of it. I don't care who we elect to, 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 to the select board. Things aren't changing. We need Dr. Jesus. We need Jesus Christ. We need the church to rise up. And if we do, showers of blessing upon us. Showers of blessing. I was looking at the historical society here on Congress Street because I was so intrigued about what used to be in this building. Do you know that there used to be thousands of people that came into Congress Street? I couldn't believe it. There used to be a gas station right down here at the light. The place was booming. I looked at the tax rolls and the percentage of the tax rolls were, were amazing. And all this is at the historical society, which is the, the yellow schoolhouse down across from the New River Valley Grill in Rumford Center. And they had that all there and, and all these uh, pictures. And I'm thinking, wow! Is this, is this Rumford, Maine? Is there another Rumford? Is this an historical society? I mean, and look at Congress Street. I mean, it's, it was just amazing to me looking at those pictures. Where are all these people? What happened? Now we have to do what? We have to, you know, and it's great, and we participate in the, the Pumpkin Fest and the Lumberjack Festival and all that. But what we see there, that was just about half of what every Friday night looked like on Congress Street. And the people that were here were hard-working people. You say, Pastor, how do you know? Because if you look at their hands, you can see those brothers worked. You can look at their hands and you can see it. You can see. You, know, you, can, you can tell by, 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 the, by, the, by the, the calluses in their hands and, and, and the fact that they, that they worked hard and, and, and children knew their father and were proud of their parents. The family was intact. President Reagan said in 1984 that he was a campaign against Walter Mondale. He said America is only as good as the family. The family was intact. That's why I'm praising God that, that we had men up here praise the Lord. Married men. Children here. Taking the lead. Learning how to do that. Getting away from what the world says you have to do. Say this is what God says we have to do. I tell the guys in men's group every Sunday, it starts with us to turn this community upside down, is our men stepping up to the plate and taking the lead, raising their children, loving their wives, following the guideline of Scripture. Verse number 28, and they shall no longer be a prey for the nation. Do you know that we are easy prey? Easy prey to those that want to enslave us. Easy target is Rumford. Heroin's making a comeback. Crack is out there. Uh, different levels of weed is out there. Uh, all this kind of stuff, people, you know, coming in and, and it's, it's overwhelming. Police are doing all they can with the resources they have. 
But church, we're an easy prey. We're an easy target. This is the greatest time ever, I think, for the church to rise up and be heard. Rise up and be heard. And to make a stand. I told the guys yesterday, the 14 people that came to know Christ, and I said to them, expect your loved ones or other friends and foe to be upset with you. I remember when I got saved, everybody at the crab house teased me when I began to say to them, you know what, I can't work Sunday, I'm going to church. They began to tease me, uh-oh, you're a holy roller now, and all this other stuff, the sarcasm. But I tell you what, church, that type of suffering doesn't compare to the cross, does it? I don't think it compares at all. As Jesus was suffering and dying for us publicly, for all of Israel to see. But here, they shall no longer be a prey for the nations. Israel was an easy prey, was a prey to Assyria, was, a, was easy prey to Babylon, to Persia, to Greece, to Rome. The Muslim world was an easy prey to Adolf Hitler. At least he thought. The best thing that the Jews of the 1940s did is they began to repent for the sins of their father. And you know what? Just like uh, after, uh, during the war on terror, God used America, blood, sweat, and tears to, to rebuild and to take out uh, the terrorism of Saddam Hussein and all that. God, you know what? Used the blood, sweat, and tears of the greatest generation in America, the World War II generation. Who helped rebuild Israel? The good old red, white, and blue and President Harry Truman. You know that? It was America that God raised up to come to the aid. And he heard, he heard the prayers. He heard the prayers of the Jewish people of the late 30s and early 40s. And God began to restore them. And God's been blessing that nation ever since, including with oil. Israel's economy is off the charts because of what's taking place. Which, by the way, is Ezekiel chapter 36. If you want to see the dry bones of chapter 37, the dry bones coming alive. But he goes on to say this, Nor shall beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and no one shall make them afraid. Do you know what, church? Praise be to God. I long for a day when Rumford, where we walk with pride, we know that if God be for me, who be against me, and that we are safe in our community once again, and you don't need a taser or a gun in your back pockets. God's watching over you. To where the citizens of the river valley again become God-fearing citizens. Now, I don't care what church they go to, but God-fearing citizens that love the Lord. And here, uh, uh, God, God continues, verse 29, I will raise up for them a garden, a growing place of renown, and they shall no longer be consumed with hunger in the land, nor bear the shame of the Gentiles any more. Praise be to God. You know what, church? A growing place. Can the river valley again become a growing place? Yes, I believe it is. God blesses us and showers us with his blessing. We don't need a casino. We just need men and women that are hard working, that are going to be used by God and shine for the Lord publicly and privately, personally and professionally, that God can give us a garden and great things can grow. And guess what? God's already planting seeds. Many of you out here, God is blessing and you are growing into something beautiful for Jesus Christ. Bruce Fair had asked me for the interview for the, uh, for the Thanksgiving giveaway. He said, Pastor, when are you going to be satisfied with, this, with the food pantry and all that you do? I said, well, we don't have to have a Thanksgiving giveaway. Sorry, what? I said, yeah. But we don't have to have one. Because every family is working and have their needs met. And we don't have to have the food pantry anymore. Do you think that's possible? Yeah, I do. I do think it's possible. I do think it's possible. God, God can move. Do you know what, church? Prior to the Great Depression, America didn't have food pantries. God, God bless. My, my grandmother had raised 12 kids. There was no food pantry to go down to. They were waited on God. My grandfather worked during the day as a tobacco farmer, and at night he was a coal miner. You know, they with 12 kids. I believe it, church. I believe it. I long for that day when we don't need the Thanksgiving giveaway. And I believe it's possible. God says, hey, uh, we'll no longer be consumed with hunger in the land. Nor bear the shame of the Gentiles anymore or the world anymore. 
the enemy anymore. Church, do you know a lot of people, many of you know this, but do you know a lot of people sell their food stamps? For other things. But I believe as they hear the good news and if they begin to be showered with blessings of God, the heart will, the heart will go from guilt to freedom. And they'll, be, uh, they'll have a life where they take pride in who they are rather than to bear the shame. Verse number 30, Thus they shall know that I, the Lord their God, am with, am with them. Wow! Church, the greatest shower of blessing is to know when you're walking with God. And when God is blessing you and He is showering you with His presence. Wow! And to know that God gets the credit. You know that God gets the credit. Who got the credit for yesterday? To God be the glory. Jesus Christ gets the credit. All we do it's not about what you do. It's not every one of us, myself, and every one of you can be replaced. So you don't need to brag on yourself. We're giving God the glory for all that he is doing. Every single one of us here should have a desire to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Here, church, it's, it's so important where God says, hey, I want to be your God. I want to be your God. Do you know that, that in Ezekiel, the, the Bible says where the enemy had more faith in the Jewish God than the Jews themselves. The Babylonians feared God more than the Jews themselves. They knew when to attack and what parts to invade and what parts not to. They seemed to know the, 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 the covenant with Abraham better than the Jewish people. That would that'd be so sad as, as if an unbeliever knows more about God than you do. Especially if you're a mature believer. Thus they shall know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and they, the house of Israel, are my people. Do you know what church? We are God's people if you're a believer here. And I pray that this whole river valley will be showered with blessings, and everybody's going to know God is still God. And he's still awesome God, worthy to be praised. Lastly, verse 31. You are my flock and the flock of my pasture. The shepherd of this church is Jesus Christ. And if you're a believer, you're in the flock. You're grazing at his pasture. And that God, his hand is, is on the move. And as we learned last week that Jesus is the good shepherd and he, he desperately wants to meet the needs of his people. But here, God declares through the prophet Ezekiel to Israel, you are my flock and the flock of my pasture. Even in the midst of all their sin and idolatry, God was extending grace to his people to come back home. And you know what? God's still doing it to us today. There are a lot of folks that have done some, some terrible things. Some terrible things. Hurtful things. Abandoned children. Abandoned their wives. They, uh, people that have committed terrible crimes. But Jesus loves them. You might not like that. But he does. He does. Let us not walk around with our nose in there. He loves them. He loved every person that was in this place yesterday. And he loves every person that's in this place today. He went to the cross for them. But this, this message today is all about God's people. As God showers blessing, if you continue reading in Ezekiel 35, you will find that that blessing is contingent upon repentance. Parents, how many of you are parents? Raise your hand if you're a parent. I don't care how old your children are. Oh, we're going to be parents. Isn't that pretty cool? Think about this. Parents, let me ask you a question in closing. When reports card come out, report cards come out, and you see, you know, like five F's on the pre-port card. Do you um, get all happy and say, wow, I'm going to give you $100 because that's just great. Let's go get pizza. There's, there's something going on in my house if I walked in with a report card like that. And, and we think that God is just up there, a genie in a bottle, just doing all. And all the good things do come from God. But God's looking into the heart, just like parents you do. You don't sit around and reward bad behavior. 
if your if your child back talks you, oh, let's let's go out and get a soda because this is just wonderful. You just back talk me. Parents, you don't do that, do you? If you do, please tell me so I do not come to you for parenting advice. That's that's not that's not good parenting. You know, and God God works the same way. He was not going to bless Israel with showers of blessing until they turned from their sin. God's not going to bless the river valley until we turn from our sin and it starts with us and then we go out and share it with the world. And you know what? Many people are. Many of you here today, if it wasn't for the grace of God, would be in a cemetery somewhere. You Amen. know it as well as I do. But the grace of God upon your life. And it's, I'm so encouraged by this verse here. You are my flock and the flock of my pasture. Wow, think about that. We belong to God. He's watching over us. You are men, and I am your God, says the Lord God. We're here, we are men and women, and we're on God's team. We can't lose, church. We can't lose because we're on God's team. You say, Pastor, what happens if we're persecuted? We're going to start losing. Oh, no, we're not. Blessed are those who are persecuted, to be absent from the bodies, to be present from the Lord. Paul told Philippi, rejoice in your suffering. I rejoice in all suffering. We are blessed. If one day we come here and somebody's egg the front door, will they make the front door? That's why we have students upstairs. The guys, math class can wait. We've got to go down and scrub some egg off the door. We won't miss history. Don't worry about that. But we can get out of math. I tell you what, something like that may happen. The adversary is not going to sit back and let God just shower us with blessing without doing anything. My job is to prepare you for what will ever come. Blessed are those who are persecuted for His sake. Blessed are those who, blessed are those who endure affliction for the sake of the cross. Church, before things get better. God's got to shake this river valley with his church. Got to shake it up. And God's already doing it with us. You say, Pastor, I don't think I'm in that. I don't, I don't think I'm in that game. Well, then go on down to the church of Sardis and hang out there. By the way, that's the dead church. We want to be alive here. And we want to see this place filled with folks. Turning and saying, you know what? I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of the guilt and shame. I'm tired of this river valley. I'm tired of, of all this brokenness and pain and reputation and all that stuff. I want showers of blessing. What does it take? It takes forgiveness of God. It takes an attitude change. God's given every person two hands. Lord, what am I going to do with these two hands for you? What am I going to do with these two hands? God's given you a heart. Are you like King David? Are you a man or a woman after God's own heart? It starts with us, guys. You're going to have two choices you can tell your kids. And I'm going to close with this. The two choices you can tell your kids is, kids, the grass is greener down in the south. Get out of here while you got time. Or you can say, kids, I want you to join me as part of the solution. And we're going to fight to see showers of blessing for, from God. And we're going to stand and be accounted for so the River Valley does not become a ghost town anymore. Those are your two choices, parents. Yep, the grass, the grass is greener on the other side. They're, they're more prosperous places. But God wants to bless us. There were a lot of places I could have went when things got tough, and people, and I remember one presbyter saying this, well, you don't have to stay there and endure that. The grass is greener in other places. God's called us here for such a time as this. God has called you and I here. This is where we lay our head. Will we fight for it? Do we want showers of blessing from God? Do we want showers of blessing to come upon us so that 10 years from now, we can stroll down to the historical society and we can say, we had a hand in God using us 
to flip this river valley upside down once again for God before we are no longer on the map. You say, does that really happen? Oh, yes, it does. Sodom and Gomorrah. But there are a lot of towns that used to exist that don't anymore where they merge. They merge with another town or then they, they're, they're non-existent. And as a student of history, I've seen that. And you know what? Many times, the reason towns go by the wayside is because of the heart of the citizen. God wants to bless us. And his blessing is going to come from the beauty that he's given us. But the most important piece is the beauty of your soul. Do you know that you belong to God? Do you know that you're created in his image? And that when we're born, we're born into sin. We're born separated. But to be reunited with God and to know that that void has been filled only comes through one way, and that's the road of Jesus Christ. That's the beginning of the blessing. When you have a whole different attitude, when you have a whole different attitude, you begin to see things through the eyes of Christ as a believer. You begin to look at things on the brighter side. Rather than being a pessimistic person, optimistic person. And it starts with Christ. The question is, do you believe God can bless us? Do you believe that he can? Or do you believe that it's too far gone? We're too far gone. We can't live in the time machine of yesteryear. We're just too far gone. It's best that we just start new in a different, more prosperous place. I told the six members of Praise Assembly in 19, I'm sorry, in 2003, why can't Praise Assembly be the bigger and better thing? Why can't the River Valley be the bigger and better thing and be a trendsetter for the entire state of Maine, perhaps all of New England? And it starts right here. And it starts at the cross. The question is, do you believe that? Father, thank you for your word today. Lord, we are thankful that you still want to shower blessings upon us in all of the disobedience and all of the sin and all of the enslavement that has come forth unto this community. Your word gives us an answer. And Lord, you have brought people here from the professional field that know... Hello. Thanks for watching today's message. Appreciate you taking the time to listen to each word of God as shared here today. I'd also like to take this time to invite you to our weekly services. Sunday school for all ages at 9 a.m. Worship at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. with Children's Church at 10 a.m. Also, we have a special men's and women's group at 5 p.m. on Sundays. During the week, we have several services as well. We have an extra innings class with me, Pastor Justin, on Tuesdays at 10. Uh, also, uh, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., we have a special class on Israel and the Book of Acts. Wednesday, we have a love and respect class for married couples at 10 a.m., also, on Wednesday night, we have our family night for all ages at 6.30 p.m. And lastly, we have our food pantry on Thursdays with servings at both 10 and 11 a.m. May God richly bless you today. Thanks again for watching.